so that we can preserve it for tomorrow and so as you are here hit that share button as we resume the conversation uh, immediately and so folks why Nambo Diki? Why am I here to tell this story about Nambo Diki? Who is Nambo Diki, first of all? Nambo Diki is a man of Nigerian descent who sometime back came to Liberia and made it known to the Liberian people that he has been a Liberian. But again, let's give you the genesis of Nambodiki. Nambodiki told us that he has been a Liberian. And there are multiple explanations that he provided that qualify him to be a Liberian. According to Nambodiki, his father moved to Liberia in 1946. I believe that was during the administration of William V. S. Tuttman. He explained that during his father's stay in Liberia in that time period, his father naturalized as a Liberian and that his father worked for Firestone and that his father also served as a consultant in the administration of William V. S. Tuttman. And that Sometime later, his father went back to Nigeria and gave birth to him, the man Austin Dubusi Nambodiki. He said when his father returned to Nigeria after acquiring Liberian citizenship, went to Nigeria and gave birth to him, Nambodiki. Nambodiki we can say his parents are Nigerian or of Nigerian descent. So he was born in Nigeria. That's a very important uh, piece of information for you to know. But according to him, because his father has acquired Liberian citizenship, when his father has given birth to him in Nigeria, he automatically became a Liberian or was born a Liberian. And the reason is, according to our alien and nationality laws, alien and naturalization laws, sorry, when you are a child born to anybody of Negro descent who having to be a Liberian, you are a Liberian. In other words, it's one of your parents holds Liberian citizenship at the time of your birth. You are a Liberian and you remain a Liberian until that child reaches the age of 18. And you have the right at the age of 18, the fact that one of your parents is a Liberian to decide which one of your parents' citizenship you go with. So according to Nambodiki, he went with his father's citizenship because his father had naturalized them as a Liberian. And so on that basis, he became a Liberian. Now, another part that we need to also understand is that Nambodiki told us that he naturalized as a Liberian in 1982. Few questions there. Why did he have to naturalize as a Liberian? He explained because according to our law, once you reach A18, like I said earlier, you need to declare which one of your parents nationality you're going with or citizenship you're going with he said at the time he had reached age 18 he did not declare that he was going with his father citizenship because his father has naturalized as a Liberian and that was the reason 
he naturalized in 1982. Now, it's getting interesting here. How old was Namodiki then when he naturalized in 1982? Namodiki explained that he naturalized in 1982, right? So the question is, what year was he born and at what age he was when he naturalized? Now, earlier, remember, he has given us the impression of having a unique knowledge of our naturalization laws. He having to be a lawyer by perfection. But then we got to know that Mr. Nambodiki naturalized at the age of 17. This is a man who had you need knowledge that he needed to be age 18 before declaring which one of his parents' citizenship he needed to go with. But then, interestingly, we got to know that he did naturalized in 1982. And at that time, the year 1982, he was 17 years old. That in itself is a violation of our laws. Our alien and naturality laws requires that in order for one to naturalize as a Liberian, that person must be an adult at the age of 21. So Mr. Nambo Dickey broke our law by getting his citizenship as an adult, even though he was a man of them. So that's the law he broke right there. Now, fast forward, Number Dickey, he told us he went to the Louis Atto Grand School of Law. I believe that when he was going to law school, he went to law school as a Liberian because we now learn, one, that he said he was a Liberian from the day he was born because his father was or his father naturalized as a Liberian. And also that he naturalized in 1982. And so when he entered the University of Liberia at the Louis Atto Grand School of Law, he entered as a Liberian. That violation number two. He should not have naturalized at age 17. No. Our law says you must be age 21. So the fact that he naturalized in 1982 at age 17, he broke the law. Violation number two. He entered the University of Liberia as a Liberian. And he faked that. Because in order for his citizenship, his naturalization to be deemed legal and valid and legitimate, he needed to have met the 21 years or age requirement as set by our laws for naturalization. He did not. So going to the University of Liberia, attending the Lewis Arthur Grand School of Law as a Liberian, was in itself a violation. Nambodiki number two. Nambodiki number three, he graduated, he became a lawyer, and because he had given us the impression that he had been a Liberian, he joined the Liberian Bar Association, that is the umbrella organization for all the lawyers in our country, Liberia. My understanding is that to be a member of that particular organization, you must be a Liberian lawyer. Nambodiki, again, Nambodiki, his way at the Bar Association, carrying himself as a Liberian lawyer. And so he got admitted. 
So let's look at the checkpoint failures. One, he got naturalized as a Liberian at age 17. No one caught that. He entered the University of Liberia, the Louis Arthur Grant School of Law as a Liberian. No one checked that. Three, he got admitted at the bar. No one checked that. So that three checkpoint failures right there and three uh, violations right there. Going forward, as a lawyer in the country, as a lawyer in the country, he needed to be uh, admitted into or he need to be granted permission to practice laws in our country and my understanding is that it's something that the supreme court you know or has to give a blessing to as a lawyer for you to be able to practice law in our country to represent clients at our courts you must get some sort of certification some sort of approval to do so so at the supreme court at the judiciary branch of government Nambo Diki, again, with what we have gotten to know now to be a fake Liberian citizenship, managed to get that blessing of our highest court, and he has been practicing law in the country, Nambo Diki. Remember that word. Now, folks, if you are just joining or share the show, we are trying to explain write the history called Nambo Diki in the Liberian uh, history. So we will explain this and then we will also be able to give you some recommendations because this man of Nigerian descent who carried himself all the many years as a Liberian, we just got to know was never a Liberian in the first place. He lied about his Liberian citizenship all the many years and started enjoying the rights that are reserved for only Liberians based on our laws for 40 years. He did that. Now, some people got some tough language for him. Some people consider that as 419. So they are calling him a 419er. Uh, that's not the language I will use. Some people are calling him a froster because uh, he used fraud throughout uh, to maintain Liberian citizenship. And because of that, he's been able to uh, land several, several positions in Liberia as a Liberian. So going forward, Mr. Nambudiki stay with his fake citizenship managed to learn an appointment from our government four different appointments from my research the first to my knowledge was when mr nambo Diki was appointed by president we are sometime in 2018 as the chairperson on an investigation into the reported global wasteness corruption scandal at NOCA, the National Oil Company of Liberia. NOCA has reported some time back that officials then at the uh, at the Liberian National Oil Company, or uh, NOCA, uh, the National Oil Company of Liberia, had carried on severe financial misdealings. At that institution and so it was so alarming that the government the president needed to act and the president went and constituted a committee guess who headed that committee that was austin dubusi nambodiki that is the first name remember that so mr nambodiki learned that job from president we and he was able to uh, submit his findings that report, I'm not sure it was ever made public to the Liberian people. Second appointment that he was able to obtain as a Liberian, even though he has not been a Liberian, but he has been a Liberian in a very thick way, was when he got appointed also on another committee 
that needed to investigate a non-corruption scandal at the agriculture ministry. It was donor money that was made available. There was allegation that that money was being misapplied. And so again, Nambodiki uh, was appointed. That was the fourth, I mean, the second appointment that Nambodiki landed as a Liberian. The third appointment, Mr. Nambodiki was also appointed by President Weir to head the Good Governance Commission of Liberia. The Good Governance Commission is the commission that was headed by a uh, former interim president, uh, uh, Amos Claudius Sawyer. Imagine that. Amos Claudius Sawyer, who is an astute Liberian, who taught at the University of Liberia, who served our country, a statement headed that institution. And when it was time for him to be replaced, our president replaced him with Mr. Austin Dubusi Nambodiki, a Nigerian with a fake Liberian citizenship who faked his way or Nambodiki his way throughout the system. That was his third appointment. For some reason, the Liberian Senate did not confirm him. The Liberian Senate did not confirm him. But he still served at that agency's of government for 90 days. Now, legal luminaries are saying that alone was a violation for him to not have been confirmed for that position and to have served for 90 days. That was in itself a violation of our law. Nambodiki. Some people call him a 419er. Some people call him a froster. So, Nambodiki was not confirmed. But for some reason, this Nambodiki guy continued to enjoy a sweet relationship, a sweet political relationship with President Weir. And President Weir went ahead and appointed him again. This time to the Liberian Anti Corruption Commission, the LACC. Somewhere, somehow, the very Senate that had denied Number Dickey for the Good Governor Commission chair position confirmed Number Dickey. This time, the Senate again could not vet this man properly to unearth his citizenship. The Senate failed. The Senate was not able to prove that. So he slipped on, on their hands, Nambodikile, and got confirmed. And so as we speak, Mr. Nambodiki, Austin Dubusi Nambodiki, the fake Liberian, who is of Nigerian descent, is now our current chair for the Liberian Anti-Corruption Commission. No wonder why, up to this time, since our government has been in power for a little over two years now, we are yet to get a report of how much money has been recovered by our government in its fight against corruption, made against past officials who is being alleged have stolen money from our country and have taken some of uh, uh, the money out of the country. But unlike our country, next door in Sierra Leone, if I can add that piece quickly, Sierra Leone Anti-Corruption Commission has been able to recover $16 billion. Leon. What is stopping our government from telling us how much has been recovered by this institution headed by the fake uh, Liberians, Nambodiki. What is stopping our government from doing that? But let's come to the juicy part of it. And don't forget, Mr. Nambodiki also has an integrity question as was brought to our attention at this network by somebody who has who having to know him 
So we will come to that. But let's continue with Nambodiki. Nambodiki his way in our entire system. And so Mr. Nambodiki, as though he has not done enough already to deceive our entire system, as though the appointments that he has been given by the president were not enough already. President, we are this time around appointed Nambo Diki to head the Liberian National Election Commission. So when he got appointed, people started paying attention this time. People got concerned. What is it about this man that he is the only one who has been appointed over and over and over again by our president? What is it about him? Even people in the CDC that some of us all know who were in the vanguard who helped this president to get elected, not a single one has been appointed twice in this government. But for some reason, unknown to everybody, but best known to the president, and maybe Nambo Diki, he has been appointed over and over by the president. And so his most recent appointment now, you know, kind of like raised eyebrows. And people started asking questions. Again, folks in cyberspace, if you are just joining our broadcast here, Focus on Liberia, please hit that share button. Many people missed the entire story about this now withdrawn neck boss or chairman, Nambu Diki, and we are trying to write this history so that we can preserve it for generations after us uh, to get to know. We think that this is a unique piece of history that we can all learn a valuable lesson from. And later on during the broadcast, I will tell you the lessons that we need to learn from this piece of history for which it must be told in a much more concise and, you know, maybe eloquent way for the a, a lack of better word. So Nambodiki got appointed by the president as the boss for or chair for the election commission. People started raising concerns. What is it about this guy? And we got to know this guy is of Nigerian descent. And so people felt the need that he needed to be or vetted in every aspect. His citizenship needed to be vetted. His credentials needed to be vetted. His integrity needed to be vetted. Everything about this man needed to be vetted. Because the, 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 the logical conclusion or assumption then became this man must have some kind of special skill sets to be getting these appointments from the president. Now is noon sedition is getting this kind of appointment. So we need we need to know who is this guy. And so the issue of his citizenship became the leading concern on the minds of more Liberians. And so when it was time for his confirmation hearing, he too sometime or in no time got to know that he had a uphill battle to claim. And so he went on a media blaze and got himself into hot water. He decided to explain about who he is, how he is a patriotic Liberian, and how that though his name and be ugly, he got naturalized in 1982. And in fact, his father was a Liberian, his father naturalized, so he was born to a naturalized Liberian, so he is a Liberian. How would you judge him by the work he would do and not by his ugly name, and, you know, and that, that he would be able to do a good job? And so he started telling us how a patriotic Liberian he has been or he is. So people were wondering, this is the first time for us to see a nominee going on a media blaze to justify, to explain 
to showcase, to unveil or reveal himself to the public to demonstrate that he has all it takes in terms of credentials, in terms of status, in terms of capability, in terms of suitability to be able to deliver and that he will be credible and that he's a patriotic Liberian. He went on Media Blaze. He landed an interview with Front Page Africa, further raising people's concern because, to the best of our knowledge, that has never been done before or maybe of recent time in Liberia or by any nominee. So the issue of his citizenship became a hot button issue. He went for confirmation on day one. On confirmation on day one, the pressing on his citizenship. Mr. Nambudiki said he is a Liberian. And as a matter of fact, he naturalized as a Liberian in 1982. And so the senators asked him, can you produce your citizenship certificate? He told them on day one of confirmation, Yeri, that he did not have it with him on day one. And so they asked him, will you be able to bring it on day two? And Nambodiki said he will be able to bring it on day two. So Nambodiki went and appeared on the second day of confirmation hearing. On the second day of confirmation hearing, that was when Nambodiki was caught pens down. The same citizenship question came about. Do you have your citizenship certificate? Nambodiki more than hesitated. And in all time when and presented a citizenship certificate. And he said that was the only one he had. Some people who analyzed it said it was more like a photocopy. But let's look at the citizenship certificate. Let's see whether that was a legitimate certificate. So many questions on that certificate. And because Nambodiki could not provide the questions, I mean the answers to the questions that the citizenship certificate uh, brought about, it was on that basis we came to the conclusion that his citizenship was fake and it is a fact now as we speak. And so number one, Mr. Nambudiki carries a Liberian passport. In his Liberian passport, his date of birth is 19, a year of birth is 1965. But in his citizenship certificate that he presented, it carries the year 1963. Two different birth dates or birth year. So when they asked Nambodiki why it said that your passport carries a different birth date or year and your citizenship certificate is carrying a different year of birth, Mr. Nambodiki answer was he has no control on what goes on his documents. This is a lawyer. This is the man who has practiced law for so long in our country. This is the man who is a member of the Liberian Bar Association. This is a man who graduated from the Louis Arthur Grand School of Law. This is a man who represented clients at our courts in Liberia. This is the man who got appointed four times by our government. And he cannot tell how he landed these different birth dates on his documents. And that was his answer. Mr. Nambudiki could not prove it. Another question on his birth certificate, I mean his citizenship certificate was that the print, the font on his citizenship certificate was a computer generated font or writing, if you like. Those who have expertise in this area said that the font the writing kind on that certificate is actually uh, computer generated. And in 1982, the year that he said he naturalized, some people who are knowledgeable about that time said, we did not have computer in Liberia that was being used or we didn't have computers in Liberia that were being used to produce a citizenship certificate or citizenship certificates at that time. 
and so for Nambo Diki to have presented a citizenship certificate that carries a computer generated writing or print that in itself was another fraud another Nambo Diki mark that one now another question or concern people raise on a citizenship I mean a naturalization or, or, or certificate yeah citizenship certificate also was the picture there is a picture on his citizenship certificate that looks far older than a 17 year old person some people are saying that photo on his citizenship certificate was far older or looks far older than a 17 year old person so that that meant that or that also means that Mr. Nambudiki was actually not 17 years old uh, when he got the citizenship certificate. That's another possible way to look at it. Another possibility is that because somebody said that is not his actual photo, it could mean also that maybe that was somebody else's certificate with the person photo and he decided to use it anyway. And then look at the name on his citizenship certificate also. On the citizenship certificate, we see there that Nambo Diki English name on it is Augustine. And Nambo Diki new English name is Austin. Austin Dubusi Nambo Diki. But on his citizenship certificate we did not see austin we see augustine another number dicky right there so it became so glaring and so appalling and so embarrassing that the senators immediately ended the confirmation hearing and these were the words of senator meton tiaje mr nominee from your explanation it is clear that there are multiple discrepancies and inconsistency on your citizenship certificate and in your explanation about your citizenship and so at this time we will End the nomination and call the Saji I am to escort you. Nambodiki was called pens down and was escorted outside of the Senate confirmation hearing. Folks in cyberspace, there is a unique piece of history that we can learn valuable lessons from. It points to how weak our immigration system is. It points to how weak and vulnerable and porous our system in Liberia is. It also points to how we Liberians are not critical. We don't check things. We like things to slide. And that is how this man of Nigerian descent carries himself for a period of 40 years as a Liberian citizen and enjoy the benefits, the rights, and privileges thereof for a period of 40 years. He nambled Dicky his way through our entire system. He deceived the Senate. He deceived the president. He deceived the Bar Association. He deceived the University of Liberia, the Louis Atto Grand School of Law. He deceived everybody. He deceived the country. That man has committed a serious crime in our country. So the question is, where is he as we speak? And prior to he even going for the confirmation hearing, 
Many Liberians have called the president to withdraw the nomination. The president will not withdraw the nomination. Some people even pleaded with the nominee to step aside, to tell the president to pull him out. He will not listen. And there is a reasonable understanding why the man would not withdraw his own nomination or ask the president that he be withdrawn because he succeeded with that at the University of Liberia when he attended the Louis Arthur Grand School of Law. He succeeded with that by getting admitted into the bar. He succeeded with that by being given the blessing of our courts to practice law in our courts. He succeeded with that by getting appointment by getting appointed by President Weir to head the investigation into Nokar on the Global Business Report. He succeeded with that when he learned another appointment from the president to help the Liberian Good Governance Commission. He succeeded with that by getting appointed by the president again to help the Liberian Anti-Corruption Commission. He succeeded with that when the Senate confirmed him for the Liberian Anti-Corruption Commission. And so why wouldn't he think that he can get away with it again? And so he could not get the unique sense of understanding that there is fire on the horizon. So Nambodiki had remained adamant until he got embarrassed and got caught pens down. And so you will think as we speak, fellow Liberians, a man of this character, a man of this behavior, who found one night his way through our entire system and enjoyed the benefits reserved for Liberians, you would think this man there will be charges against him by the Attorney General of the Republic, by the Justice Minister. You know why we are yet to come to that? They may enjoy an unflinching support and political relationship with President Weir. Look at the number of appointments this man landed. He's not a sedition. Not a single sedition has gotten appointed two times. Not a single one, to my knowledge. But this guy of Nigerian descent got all these appointments. This guy enjoyed a consequential relationship with President Weir. Not even Mamba Molo enjoys that. Not even Nathaniel Mange enjoys that. Not even Samuel Twe enjoys that kind of relationship. Leads to talk about maybe a Charles Koji. Koji. Leads to talk about a Zakama. These guys have been left out for something they fought for. But that is not my issue yet. My role this show is about writing this number decade history in the Liberian books of history to close it and make the necessary recommendation. And so now that we have shared with you this number decade history of Liberia, how do we close it? How do we close the history? Many people have already started making a lot of recommendations that I agree with. That this guy should not only be withdrawn from his nomination as the chairman of the National Election Commission, he should also be withdrawn as the chairperson for the Liberian Anti-Corruption Commission. He should be forwarded for prosecution or he should be subjected to an investigation first and when all the facts as preponderance as they are are laid bare before him let him be persecuted thereof and some people are even recommending that this man be deported for defrauding our system deceiving all our institutions and our leaders and milking 
the benefits left alone are set aside by our laws for only Liberians. That's what Nambodiki did. And we think Liberians need to know about this piece of history. Now, some people started politicizing this thing. Some people started rationalizing this thing. Some people started intellectualizing this whole thing. That some Liberians enjoy citizenships of other countries and that they enjoy the benefits and rights and privileges thereof, but they are going after their fellow African when in fact our constitution provides that anybody of Negro descent is entitled to a Liberian citizenship. Don't forget, he is entitled, but did he obtain his Liberian citizenship in a manner as spread out by our law or stipulated in our laws? And the simple question is a B and O. No, he did not. He lied that he has naturalized in 1982. When we verified that year with his date of birth, we got to know that he was at age 17 and the, 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 the age requirement for naturalization in Liberia is age 21. So whatever he claimed he did is completely fake and was not done legally and it's the saying that one is not done legally, it's not done at all. And so, this man, fellow Liberians, defrauded our system. It is not about the fact that he is of Nigerian descent that is getting Liberians so much unhappy about him. That is making Liberians to want to see him persecuted. We want him to be persecuted so that we all can learn this lesson. Even those of us in the United States and other countries. So that when we are getting status or our statuses in those countries, we should do it as described by the laws so that we can get in trouble. That's another lesson we can learn. So that no one will behave in this manner as dead men has in Liberia no more. So that our leaders will always ask the right questions about anybody who gets appointed to a consequential position in our country. That is why we are doing this. Look, Liberia has a history as being a champion of pan-Africanism. Those of you who follow the uh, confirmation hearing, uh, Mr. Komine Wisse spoke well. He said, the reason we are asking all these critical questions, many reasons, the reasons are not because this man is a, he's from Nigeria originally or was born in Nigeria or has a Nigerian accent. The reason is not about trying to be xenophobic. No. He said that Liberia became the melting pot of freedom many years back. That is a piece of history we Liberians should be proud of. And in fact, he went as far as saying Dr. Eamon Claudia Sodia, his parents came from Freetown, naturalized in Liberia. And so he was a natural born Liberian. And no one has ever raised questions about his nationality in Liberia. Morning Katan, who served as foreign minister, I believe, during Taylor administration. His father came from Lebanon. He was born in Liberia to a Liberian parent who having to be a Negro descent. Talking about the mother. My understanding that his mother is a Basel woman. He served in Liberia. Uh, Commander, we said also talk about 
E.J. Raw. Many of you know the name E.J. Raw. Those of you who read the history. E.J. Raw, coming up, we said, was able to share with us that E.J. Raw is also of Nigerian descent, just as Austin Dubusi Nambodiki. That was during the time of slavery, he or his great grandparents were taken from Nigeria to America. And when the repatriation started, he landed in Liberia. So he having to be of Nigerian descent. And he served as president of the Republic of Liberia. And many other people. Commander Wissa also said that even Nelson Mandela, when he ran from you know the discrimination and persecution in, in South Africa, he went to Liberia, he was confirmed. Liberian citizenship, in other words, Liberian citizenships were confirmed on him, and he had carried a Liberian passport. So Liberia have had a history of opening its arms to people from all over the world. And we Liberians, all, we all know how we welcome missionaries into our country, how they lived there, how they participated into our society. And no one discriminated against them. But for Nambo Diki to have taken advantage of our, our generosity, our love for humanity and our fellow men and our fellow human beings and defraud the entire system to deceive our government and defraud our system. And 419 his way out. And Nambo Diki his way out. That needed to be checkmated. So that such a behavior will not and never be committed by any other person. And so that we as a people, including all of us, when we say we are this, we should make sure we are who we say we are. And that we will have the documents to prove it. And so, Nambo Diki being caught pants down, being x-rayed by the Senate, Liberia asking questions. It's not a Liberia trying to be xenophobic. It's not a Liberia trying to discriminate. No, that was not it. I mean, after all, all these many years, this man has been enjoying his la uh, claimed Liberian citizenship and enjoying all the benefit thereof. And so, folks, in cyberspace, space, uh, we thought that it is important that the piece of history be told, documented, and preserved. Yeah, I focus on Liberia. This is what we do. We educate, we elevate, and we promote all things. Liberia. This unique piece of history needed to be told to be documented, and to be preserved. After this broadcast, this broadcast, this video, will be uploaded to YouTube and will be kept as a piece of history for generations after us to be able to listen to. Because what we also come to know is that Liberians, it's easier for us to listen to something than to read. Because listening sometimes becomes easier than reading. And the other good part is that not everybody reads. Not everyone reads. Not everybody reads. Not every person reads. So it is good for us to document this in this manner and turn it into a video because at least everyone listens. And so folks, we want to say thank you for following our broadcast uh i'm sure you're not going to be happy with me because we're not taking phone calls because this is a special broadcast intended to write the piece of history to close the number dicky chapter in our history how a man of nigerian descent came to our country and defrauded our entire system of governance and so, uh, without much I do, I will read your comments. And after reading your comments, I will be able to uh, close 
the broadcast uh, so but let me do this quickly before reading your comments let me bring I told you I was going to talk about some interrogative questions against the character of Mr. Nambudiki and it's good I remember that because I, I want to be able to to keep my promise I want to be able to keep my promise uh, uh, on this Nambudiki Austin Dubusi Nambudiki as he's known that's his legal name we had the opportunity to have a brother a gentleman who told her he is a pan-africanist and he is a man who believes that as african we are one he stands for justice he stands for the truth he reached out to us that librarians should be worried about this man that this man does not have the character that he claims to have to be occupying these consequential positions in our country and that he knows him personally and he reached out to us and we had him here on this show he told a few things that number dicky he has a criminal behavior that's his words that's not my words he said number dicky at some time who claimed to be a liberian was a member of the nigerian union in liberia i think it was more like a business union in liberia of all our nigerian brothers and sisters many of them were in business so it was the nigerian business union number dicky at some point was the uh, financial secretary of that institution and so he had access to their money and he was able to take 10,000 United States dollars of that Nigerian organization based in Liberia money and he ate the money. When the Nigerian Union decided to go after him to get the money, this gentleman who has unique I mean, uh, knowledge of this guy, he told us that Nambo Diki went to the Supreme Court and deregister the Nigerian Union that was registered in Liberia. The reason he did that so that when the Nigerian Union goes after him for their money as an institution, that institution will cease uh, to exist, thereby giving them zero legal grounds to go after him for their money. And the gentleman told us, he goes by the name he's watching right here, he goes by the name Wheeler Butler. He's on uh, Facebook. We had him several times here. And he went on other shows to tell this story. And I think we should, all librarians should be able to tell him thank you for what he did. He told the story over and over. Many people were not paying attention. But during the last one, people started paying attention. And Nambo Dicky got caught. And all he said, especially the one I'm sure of about his citizenship has been proven that Nambo Diki is not a Liberian. He even told me, he told us here at this network, that Nambo Diki is a Nigerian, that Nambo Diki has a family in, in Nigeria, and Nambo Diki is only hustling in Liberia. And they are reason to believe that because when uh, Senator uh, uh, Shemo asked him during the confirmation hearing, hey, Beside your clothes that own you now, what other things that you have, saying you are claiming to be the patriotic Liberians, surprisingly, shockingly, <laughs> to our dismay, Mr. Nambu Diki said, besides his clothes on him, he has his son, who is a Liberian, who is in the United States, studying, and that at some point, his son will return to Liberia to attend the University of Liberia. The man could not tell us. This man has worked for Omil as a Liberian. This man, I can say now, he is working as the chairman of the Liberian Anti-Corruption Commission. This man has been practicing law in our country and has made a lot of money. The man could not even tell us that, oh, I have my land or I have a house as a patriotic librarian who has been fortunate to be working in the country for all these many years. Even some guys I know who are just teaching 
if they don't have a house, at least they have a piece of land. This man could not tell the Senate that he has a piece of land. Least to talk about he having a business in Liberia. As a practicing lawyer, he could not even say whether he had a law firm like other lawyers do. What does that tell you? Doesn't that speak to the information that Butler gave us that this man is a Nigerian and he has a family in Nigeria. He only hustling here. The man could not tell that he had a house, a land, a business, nothing. He said beside he clothed his son in America who was going to school and will return to University of Liberia to attend school there just as he did. Nambo <laughs> Anyway, another thing, the point I was saying also is that so he took the Nigerian Union money, he ate the money and the people could not go after him because he is friends with almost all the lawyers. He's friends with Serena Cephas. He's friends with most of the lawyers. He's friends with T.C. Good, according to this guy. All the judges too. Emery Page. And he also defrauded the Willow Butler on his shape that he having to be a representative owner of. Butler said he was a representative owner of a shape. And when he, Nabodiki, heard that Butler was selling this ship because his uncle, who is the owner of the ship based in Nigeria, instructed him to sell the ship. Nabodiki came to him and said, Hey, you're selling this ship. I can help you to sell the ship. He asked him, first of all, How much are you selling the ship? He said, I'm selling the ship 500000 in United States. He said, No, I can sell the ship for you for $1 million. So hold on, I will help you. He wasted all that time and said, Butler, Butler said that there is a maintenance work that needs to be done on every ship. And the term, from what I learned from him, is called a uh, uh, dry dock. Out of dry dock or dry dock, he said. That is the way you maintain a ship. And the ship needed maintenance. That maintenance needed to be done. And that work required a lot of money. And given that, his uncle realized that putting that huge amount of money in the maintenance of the ship, uh, will almost make them to operate at a loss. He decided that they should sell the ship because business was not going. The ship was made to use to transport or, or, or strap materials from Cape Palmons, from Sano, Bricana, and to Morovia. There was a ship sometime by this scrap business was too huge in Liberia. It's that ship that was being used. There was a ship uh, that got ship wrecked somewhere around 0.4. Uh, the Coast Guard's base somewhere around there going to Negro Town, according to Butler, that the ship. So when this guy was wasting all this time because he was trying to sell the ship for a million dollars to share the, the money with Butler who having to be the owner of the ship, the ships continue to experience further trouble, further trouble. And that they even had to use a water pump machine to be pumping the water out of the ship. And at some point, they couldn't sustain it because they needed to buy fuel for the water pump machine to be. And he had staff on the ship that needed to eat, that needed to be paid. And they were not doing business anymore. And so at some point, uh, this number Dicky guy went and, get, and took uh, uh, money from another buyer that he saw who happened to be a, a, a Nigerian. And he did not even give all the money the buyer has uh, uh, given him initially to Butler. And Butler went and gave some of the money to, you know, the, the, the crew on the ship. So from one thing to another, the ship sank. And Nambo Dicky, when he got to know that he and Butler were not on the same page as how to sell the ship, he went and obtained or created fake registration document for the ship and took it to the Supreme Court. But prior to his arrival at the Supreme Court, Butler had been at the Supreme Court multiple times, according to him, and Joe Emery Page got to know about this case, and he has presented the legitimate recommend, I mean, registration document for the ship. And so when this number Dickey man got there, Emery Page was able to discover or to be able to know that the document he was presenting were all fake documents, and in fact, there is a number, just a car has a VIN number, according to him, the certain number called, I think, I and O number for the ship. Uh, that number, either uh, Nambodiki did not have it, or the one he presented was fake. 
That's how Emre Page got to know. And so he fought the case. All the people there told him, say, just leave it. Because Nambo Diki has Nambo Diki away, even our court system. The man is a lawyer. He friends with all the judges and the lawyers. And that case died. That how the man was able to lose that shape and he did not get the money he was selling for the shape. And since then, he has been telling this story. That this man is a criminal. He has another criminal friend called Israel who does a dirty deeds and all that. He told all these stories. No one listened to him. But again, that is the uh, questionable dealings of Nambo Diki. There are multiple that he talked about. He even told us that uh, Nambo Diki got into hot water at uh, the United Nations when he was working there. Somehow, somehow, you know, that too got swept under the carpet. And so he said, there are records at the Supreme Court about this man questionable dealings. And yet the Senate could not obtain this man record at the courts to use it to identify whether or not he was telling the truth about his records and about his citizen. But thank God he got caught. Again, this story needed to be told. And so let's leave it right there. Let's leave it right there. Uh, let them read your comments. And after reading your comments, we will close the broadcast. Uh, again, sorry, we're not taking phone calls today. Our phones are working, but uh, this is a special broadcast. And Butler, the gentleman I was talking about, writes, Ha ha ha, in a very corrupt way, he will eat everyone's eyeballs. If you have him in the country, he will still manipulate again to the top. You guys are playing. Butler, again, is warning us. He has been warning us within listing. George Wheeler writes, I am being told the access code is wrong. Could you check the code again? Uh, we're not taking calls, brother. Uh, I'm sorry for that. This is a special broadcast. Agatha Shelley. Shelley writes, ANC awaiting press secretary. We know your mind, said host. Somebody is coming after me. I mean, uh, come after me. I like that. I like when people come after me. You know, people need to hold me accountable too. You know, this thing here is not false. Uh, Oliver writes, Number Dickie's chapter can be closed without knowing, can be closed without knowing the president's intention as his nomination is being withdrawn along with his replacements at LACC. Is he being returned to the LACC? I said that here as a recommendation. Yes, he need to be withdrawn. Uh, his citizenship that is fake. I don't know whether we need to revoke it. It's already fake. So do we need to revoke it? Can the uh, Supreme Court revoke that? I don't know. But again, I agree with you. He need to be withdrawn from the uh, LACC and be recommended for investigation and subsequent uh, prosecution. I see my man Paul Janje Soman here watching. Julius Sankama writes, Chicken in the constant habit of dicking would definitely unearth its mother's bone. <laughs> uh, Sarita Thomas writes, Yes, but his was fraudulent. I couldn't agree with you. Uh, Ellen writes, I don't know why his passport was not confiscated during the hearing. Oh, uh, my sister, that's another thing then. Uh, Wallace writes, he lied his way to the top. That is Oga now. <laughs> Sir Oga. Or uh, Ellie again. But why didn't we have conduct a background check on his nominee? This is the same mistake he made by not auditing Ellen government. He is becoming a burden for the country. I respect your opinion. Uh, Herindo writes, you are a naturalized American, but stay in job, but stay, you put off your librarian association in America and other parts of the world. So that is, so that is not a crime. I think he's asking question there. Uh, Willow Butler again, thanks brother. As it's today, he remains dangerous. I don't know why they refuse to prosecute him. His son is in America benefiting from a Liberian scholarship. The son was born with a Nigerian woman, not even a Liberian. Butler again making revelation that his son who is in America studying, 
He's studying on a Liberian scholarship as a Liberian. His father he has been proven is not a Liberian. His mother is not a Liberian. Why is he traveling with a Liberian passport on a Liberian scholarship? This man is more than what we know now. Maybe President we need to explain more to us why he so loved this guy. Why he has abandoned people who and him were in the vanguard to obtain the political leadership. He saw land and most of them. I know they for a fact. And he continued to appoint this guy over and over and over. And here he is with all this questionable character. How did this guy become the darling of President Weir? How? People, how? What is going through the minds of this president? I just don't know, man. Uh, Comrade Elizana Yala writes, Nambo, the Nambo Diki, I think he meant to say, he Nambo Diki his way through Kojolore, Kajolore. This is a word I don't know, my man. The man Nambo Diki has a way of using Kajolore through the system. Oh, yeah, from the word Kajo. My man, I'm learning a lot from you here. Kajolore. All right, I learned a word. I hope you know about the word Nambo Diki, Nambo Dikile, and Nambo Dikiism. That word was coined here on Focus on Liberia by Dennis Jai and your host, Anson Nsie. Okay, folks, in Savage Space, uh, I'm sure I read some of your comments. Uh, we will now come to the end of this broadcast. Uh, let me read the last one by Abraham. Abraham, right? I think this man need to be deported back to Nigeria. Uh, that is what others are saying. Again, folks, in Savage Space, this has been a broadcast intended to tell and to close the chapter of Nambodiki, to close Nambodikiism in the Liberian political history, and to also give recommendations. I hold the recommendations that I gave, that others have given also, will be picked up by our president. Lord President, we are, it does not make you look weak to listen to your people. That's the essence of leadership. Leaders act based on the wishes and aspirations of their people. If the people say withdraw the man, you are a servant. You were elected to do for us what we want. We here are focused on Liberia conducted an opinion pool in which 88% participated and 85.1% said that man should not have been appointed and that his nomination uh, needed to be of uh, withdrawn. We want to say maybe thank you for withdrawing his nomination and uh, listening to the Liberian people. On this note, Folks in cyberspace, I want to say thank you. Those of you who share the show, those of you who make comments, those of you who wanted to call, but because we didn't open the phone line, could not make your call. But I got some announcements to make. Here, I focus on Liberia. At 7 p.m. Eastern Time, we will be having what we call debriefing on the whole number Dickey issue. And the question that we're going to debrief on, it will turn to a debate, I guess, is who is responsible for Nambo Dickey? Who got us Nambo Dickey? Is it the Senate? Is it the President? Is it our entire system? Is it Nambo Dickey himself who got us Nambo Dickey? Somebody told me you can add, is it Nambo Dickey father that got us Nambo Dickey? And so that conversation that debate will be here on Focus on Liberia, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Don't miss it. We have veteran journalist uh, Gibson Juro will be in the house. We have Joel uh, Williamson, a diehard sedition, will be in the house. He said, uh, Nambo Dickey is the one who got us Nambo Dickey. We have other people. Steve Bowley will be in the house. The man Steve Bullet will be in the house and he said it is the president who got us number Dicky. How could he say that? So somebody also said it is the Senate that got on number Dicky. What a deep briefing it will be. It will be hot, it will be politically juicier, it will turn to a debate. I will be here 
answering say your host and maybe we'll get mr danny jazz on the show also so that is all i got for you i hope i was not able to disappoint you um so that is it and that will do it thank you for watching may god bless you i'll see you and bye-bye